Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'll be discussing the recent adventure that I had, or not so recent adventure, that I had when I went on the Crown Rally trip. I was casually sitting at work one day and just minding my own business when I got a text around noon. So I had to figure my life out really quickly. So here's what happened at noon. I got a message from Justin, who is the coordinator and or co-founder of uh, Crown Rally. For those of you that don't know what Crown Rally is, it is essentially an event where a bunch of like-minded enthusiasts, they go across the country and they essentially get together and they go across the country doing amazing things for charity, but also enjoying the passions of driving these incredible cars. It's just incredible to see the wide range of cars, but also how everybody is united by this one single passion to drive. So it all began at noon on a Wednesday. The event starts at 6 on a Thursday. So I got the call at noon on a Wednesday. I talked to Justin and he's like, hey, we need a photographer uh, or an extra photographer. Are you available? Ever since I got into photography, going on Crown Rally was kind of like this incredible dream. So I'm going to college the next day. So it's the first day of class. And for those of you that don't know, if you aren't there for the first day of class, you essentially get dropped from the class. So anyways, I had to figure out how I could A, get out of class the following day and just come back the next week, but I also had to figure out how to get off of work for the weekend. I made it work somehow, so it wasn't until 4 o'clock that day that I was able to give Justin a call back and let him know, hey, I can do Crown Rally, I am so ridiculously excited. This led to a whole nother scramble. I had to finish up work and I finished work around 11, okay? I had to go and get all these different supplies because Crown Rally is essentially a vacation. It's a vacation for a car enthusiast. So I went to bed around like one, I woke up at five. Next thing you know, I'm over at Mr. Wonderbread's house and he's starting up the Camaro, getting it all ready. I parked my Charger I had at the time. He's starting up the Camaro. Uh, we're just getting ready, we're finishing up the final things uh, in order to go to the first meetup spot. And there was about 12 other cars there. So uh, I was gonna ride in a Wonder Bread car the whole time, unfortunately. Uh, so this is my next issue. So I had to figure out the previous day who I was gonna ride with from Minneapolis to Chicago, because that's where the start point was. I ended up riding in uh, Mark's Volkswagen. So this thing, I believe, was pushing like 400 horsepower. It was ridiculously quick. You have to remember that a Golf is an incredibly light car for what it is. And once you throw some more horsepower and torque at it, I mean, I wish I had some video of this thing flying down the strip. It was keeping up with some of the fastest cars on the rally. It was fairly comfortable, actually. I was very surprised. I was in the back seat uh, because when you're a photographer on a rally, you don't get first dibs on where you get to sit, unfortunately. I'm just like, you know what? I'll take some photos on the way down since we had about 12 cars. So I'm taking photos of the Jaguar and hanging out the window. Uh, uh, at one point, however, and this is probably one of my favorite, one of, my, one of the few many highlights that I had on the rally was uh, I was taking photos of Mike's Viper, and then uh, so I looked at my camera and I'm like, why is my screen black? I look at the cap, and the cap is on. So the cap was on, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just take it off and continue doing my job. I have another 100, 200 miles to go, whatever. So I take the cap off. It flies off onto the highway at about 90 miles an hour, I think it was at the time. So I lost the lens cap for the rest of the rally hasn't even begun, and I lost the damn lens cap. So anyways, I get down to Chicago, and I start meeting up with people, A, who I've talked through Instagram but never met, but also some friends from Minnesota who did not know I was coming. One of the first people that I met up with and got to meet in person was Jason. So he had the bumper off on the R8 and everything. And he was just an absolute blast. He's like, what in the hell are you doing down here? I'm like, I found out 16 hours ago I'm gonna be down here, how about you? Yeah, I've been planning this for months. I, you know, just, I live up the street, you know, cause he's from Chicago. I'm like, okay, cool, I just jumped into a journey. Another person I got to meet up with right away was my friend Larry. He's got a 900 wheel horsepower uh, GT350. And he's like, I, I tapped him on the shoulder and he's like, what the hell are you doing down here? I'm like, I'm doing photos, I guess. So I just kind of jump in and do my job, uh, and I just kind of enjoy the night before the official rally. So Thursday is kind of like this pre-party. So from around 6 to 11, uh, I'm just sitting here doing photos. So I'm just kind of doing my job, just doing, getting as many photos as I can. Mind you, I have no idea where I'm sleeping. This is one of the things that I, I knew was going to work out. I knew for a fact that I'm going to sleep somewhere but I didn't know where until like 11, once the party was kind of all wrapped up. So I'm just kind of just doing my job, just relaxing, because 
uh, one thing that you don't know or that a lot of people don't realize is that there's an incredible amount of coordination that has to go into making a rally run smoothly. And that goes from the volunteers to the photographers to the events. I mean, it just, that's one of the things I do have to compliment Crown Rally on is that they just absolutely nail it all the way. So Crown is by far one of the most organized rallies out there uh, from what I've heard. So we were down uh, doing the pre-party at this uh, location where there was just these incredible cars. I mean, it was just filled to the brim with Lamborghinis and Porsches and even, I think, I think there was a Carrera GT there as well. I mean, it was just incredible. So I figure out where I'm sleeping. I meet some more of the other media team and the volunteers uh, who uh, are often rallyers themselves as well. I figured out who I was shacking up with for the night. Uh, it was a guy named Aaron. Amazing guy. Uh, he actually had a Lotus. He had a Lotus Elise, I believe it was. Day two, I wake up in Chicago, uh, and this is after our little powwow. At the end of the night, uh, we had a little meeting with all the photographers and the volunteers to figure out what the next day is going to look like. For me, the following day, I had to wake up, I believe it was at 5 o'clock in the morning again. I had to be at the next location uh, two hours before everybody else. There's this massive airplane field that we had to get to so it was for half mile drag racing so this is actually where uh, no fly zone is held so it is a half mile uh, just landing pad for airplanes that was just kind of shut down for this incredible event well I was there two hours before and I was just kind of helping everybody set up uh, I believe it was like 80 90 degrees that day so it was pretty toasty and I'm the idiot who decided to wear jeans you know down south uh, in the middle of summer so my job uh, after everything was set up was to grab photos of everybody coming in. I think the first person to get there was Chris White who has a blue GTR. And he must have been hauling ass. He was like 20 or 30 minutes ahead of everybody else. Uh, and this is only like a two hour trip. I'm sure he was going to speed limit the whole way. That, that's all I gotta say. The day's events get started. There's a big old roast going on. Uh, the volunteers are just restocking the Red Bull which might I add this is also the first time I tried Red Bull. They had free Red Bull, and I was like, you know what, I am tired, and it wasn't even noon yet, so I'm just chugging Red Bull, just getting the day started, and it did absolutely nothing for me. The caffeine didn't hit me, the sugar didn't hit me, I was just tired. I was hiding out in the shade unless I was taking photos, uh, which is very, it's difficult to find shade in the middle of an airplane field. Uh, after doing photos the entire day, uh, everything kind of wrapped up. We did about an hour and a half drag racing. Uh, which is incredible to watch. I was just doing rollers the whole time. I got really close to the dragway, which was incredible that the, uh, I believe it was the firefighters, I had to ask them, can I get close? They're like, yeah, sure, yeah, just uh, stay out of the way of getting hit. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll get nice and close, get some decent photos. So the night before, I actually got to meet someone. Uh, his name is Marcus, uh, and he had the Dale Earnhardt CTSV. Uh, I was expecting a Cadillac to be a little more luxurious, uh, but when you're 6'4", nothing is luxurious in the back seat. I hop on into the CTSV with Marcus, and we are riding to Indianapolis. Uh, this is another city that I've never been to, uh, but either way, uh, since this is day two, we were able to hit a little more twistier roads, uh, and we were just hauling. Uh, the thing about Marcus is, is he likes to ride with all the windows down, and I'm in the back seat, okay? For those of you who are not NASA engineers, uh, I'll tell you what this experience was like. The windows are all down, so I got the wind coming from the front, just hitting me. But then, since I was in the back seat, the window or the wind from the back was just making my head bobble like this. So for three hours, my head is just doing this whole thing. It took about an hour or two to get accustomed to my head doing this. I mean, my neck muscles were giving out. You know, I'm tired. I'm trying to pass out, but I just can't. I was just kind of editing photos while driving in the back. I was just doing rollers along the way, and eventually we come up on Colin. So Colin has an orange Huracan, and I believe he was pushing 1,050 horsepower during this rally, if I remember correctly. I believe he's down tuned to about 850 now, but I might be wrong on that one. He was just going to speed limit, cruising along, just having fun on a rally. Eventually we kind of close on in, and we stop in Indianapolis. But one of the coolest parts about Crown Rally is that they shut down these awesome venues. So they shut down Monument Circle, uh, and it's like this big old historical statue. Uh, again, I'm not a history buff, so I have no idea what it's for. But we had all the cars lined up around Monument Circle, uh, but there was like one part of the roundabout where people could still kind of drive and function like an everyday society. And there was just horse carriages. I'm like, are we in the 1800s? What's going on here? We got these futuristic cars here. We got this horse over here. I was just trying to piece everything together. I was exhausted. 
either way, uh, I went out for dinner with some of the other photographers. I got to ask them, uh, what are some of the requirements that I had to fulfill for this rally? The requirements were try to aim more for quality or for quantity, uh, just as long as you provide a bunch of good content. I think by the end of the rally, I had like 5,000 photos. At the end of the day, I'm trying to put out content that I know people will enjoy. I'm sure, because not everybody's going to show 50 of the same photo. For me, it's about showing a certain level of quality that is attached to my brand name. Now we're on to day two. So this is Saturday. So I wake up and I actually got to sleep in. 7 a.m. I got seven hours of sleep. This is incredible. I hopped on in, uh, got all my luggage, and I hopped on into the CTSV uh, with Marcus. And we're just cruising along. We're working our way down to North Carolina or uh, towards Nashville at this point. So we're just kind of heading on down, uh, down to Nashville for some lunch. Uh, we get there sometime in the afternoon and it was kind of like a little buffet style, you know, nothing too crazy, but it was southern food, let me tell you. I, we're in Minnesota, okay? We are bitter people in Minnesota. Minnesota nice is just pettiness. So the food we have up here is just all frozen, nothing crazy. What I would do to go back down south, you guys don't even know. So I'm just grabbing, I'm just loading up my plate, eating everything. I'm meeting up with people that uh, I didn't get to meet throughout the event. So I met up with Mike Morgan again, who I haven't seen in two days. Just kind of catching up with the events, hearing the stories. The thing about rallies is, is everybody travels in packs. Uh, you get the super fast people towards the front who are going to speed limit. Then you get the fast people who are going to speed limit. And then you get the people who are going to speed limit in the middle. They're just trying to keep up with everybody because the thing about rallies is you don't want to be at the front because you're going to cause trouble, but you also don't want to be at the back because you're going to catch all the trouble. It's your best bet to travel in the middle of everybody because you don't want to be the guy that gets pulled over every single time. I've just been gone for about an hour. You can tell by the sun changing spots here. Uh, let's get back to the story. So anyways, I'm just kind of loading up here, uh, just talking with some people I haven't seen in like two days at this point. So I'm just catching up with the people from Minnesota, hearing the gossip, what's going on. Uh, and again, just meeting new people, which is again, it's the biggest thing about rallies. Is you just meet new people and the passion just unites us all. But uh, I caught some video of us leaving. You could just see the amount of people, the VIPs, like Savage Garage and all that. They were all parked out front. Uh, it was just kick ass. As we left, uh, we were on our way down to Knoxville. So I think it was another hour ish. I, I, I've lost track of time at this point. Uh, but eventually, uh, we hit up a pit stop and we went to a gas station. And it was at this point that Savage Garage actually pulled up. So they had the Aventador and the Urus. So we're at the gas station and I was just talking to the Savage Garage gentleman. So anyways, I'm just asking how, uh, is there anything that they've really liked so far? And they're just saying how organized it is and this, that. Uh, and anyways, after a little bit of conversation with John, I was like, is there any chance I could ride with you guys until the next checkpoint? Uh, the Urus has, I think it seats for like five or whatever, four or five. I'm like, I don't think you guys are too crammed for space, if that's okay with you. He's like, yeah, absolutely, you know, hop on in. I uh, jumped on in, and I met Randy Savage, the man himself behind Savage Garage. And we just started talking, you know, the same thing, you know, how you like in a rally, this, that. And it was at this point that the Aventador SVJ pulled up. Uh, it must have just finished filling up or something along those lines. He's like, you know what? You might have some more fun riding in that thing. And I'm like, yeah. That SVJ was just incredible. As much as I wanted to ride in the Eurus, uh, I, the SVJ was just incredible. It would have been cool if I got to ride both of them at that point. I did eventually get a ride along in the Eurus from Alex Choi uh, a few months afterwards when they did Gold Rush. But at this point, uh, I hopped on into the SVJ and I met John X. Uh, just kind of gave me the rundown how the rally has been going. And we just started cruising. I just figured it was gonna be like a half hour, hour or whatever. Uh, and this eventually turned into three hours. So we were ripping through the Smoky Mountains uh, with the SVJ. And ironically, the funny thing is here, the SVJ is a, a V12. Uh, the Eurus, I believe, is either a single or bi-turbo uh, V8. And this thing was practically straight. So it was actually louder than the SVJ through the Smoky Mountains. And as we were going through the Smoky Mountains, you could just see all the people uh, in the hills. They just had all their cameras out and everything. I mean, they heard us coming for miles.
we're just kind of flying through the mountain, just enjoying these amazing twists and turns. And Axe was actually really pushing it. But what caught me off guard is how well the Eurus was handling. You could see it through the corners. And it was just, it was planted. I mean, it, I know the SVJ has more power and it's still the same all-wheel drive system for the most part. But it was, it was tricky for it to keep up at points. It's probably just because uh, Randy drives those cars every single day. And I think he was just pushing it just to see how well it does. So he was pushing it through the hills. After ripping through the hills for about an hour, two hours, I mean, it, it was a lot of driving actually. We started getting back to civilization a little bit. Uh, we were getting closer to Knoxville, which is our final checkpoint for the evening. We were just messing around, coming through the city. I'm just grabbing as many photos as I can of the Eurus because I was in the SVJ. As we were pulling in, we got up to a stoplight and we did a little mini pull between the Eurus and the SVJ. Uh, that was hilarious. Then eventually we found the longest tunnel I've ever been in in my life. I think it was about a half a mile, maybe a mile. I don't think it was a mile long, but it was a pretty long tunnel. Just sounded like a total Formula One car. I mean, you could, when you, the Aventador is such an abusive car and he really demonstrated that, especially in the tunnel, because when it shifts gears, since it's a single clutch, it's just wham, wham, you know, just, it's just constant G-forces and pain, <laughs> to be honest with you. After three hours, as awesome as it was, my body was just like, I can't handle this anymore. city we settle on down uh, and I met up with some photographers again and we grabbed some dinner one of the best steaks I've had in my life so that was one of my favorite things about the south As we kind of just relaxed for the night I got a bunch of photos there uh, in the parking ramp uh, where we were all just kind of getting ready to launch the following morning and now finally the final and last day of crown rally I actually ended up right back where I started I actually hopped on in Kelly's Camaro we we're just going through the roads the nice curvy roads the south just has beautiful roads down there and we were just going on through there, just having a good time. Uh, I was hanging out at a sunroof, getting some pretty cool shots. Uh, hanging out at a sunroof, it's not too bad because you're facing the rear, so you don't have all the wind in your face. However, uh, because Camaros are a very, very tight car, that wasn't too fun, that wasn't too pleasant. We eventually got to the Dragon. We all just kind of stopped, met up with one another. For those of you that don't know what Tail the Dragon is, it's, a, it's one of the most famous roads in America. Uh, just because of all the curves and turns that it has. Uh, I think it's like, it's over 300 some turns in the course of 11 miles. The whole way there, I was debating how he was gonna do the Tail of the Dragon, uh, particularly because he had a massive Fig Newton sticker across the windshield. It was fine when he was going on the left turns, however, when he was going on the right turns, a little bit sketchy. But yeah, it was just an incredible experience. So he went through there, I believe, only once. Uh, the Tale of the Dragon, that was an incredible experience. Uh, it's impossible to replicate. And uh, actually, Crown Rally is going to be doing that the following season, and they're actually going to be extending that rally by another day. With all that said, uh, it was by far the most incredible event I've ever attended in my life. It was like a vacation, it was kind of like a job, it was an event. I mean, it was a little bit of everything. So, for that, I got to thank uh, Justin Tanner and uh, Tom as well because between them and the volunteers and the media team, it was just the most incredible event. So I really do hope to go on more events like that in the future. You know, from everything from pulling into the gas stations and doing takeovers to ride-alongs with incredible cars like the SVJ. Uh, that's all awesome, that's fine and dandy, but the best part is just meeting all the awesome people and just participating in something that's so noble and amazing. With that said, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I do hope to share more videos like this. Uh, as you can tell, I kind of ripped off the whole VinWiki uh, setup here to tell this story, but I just could not see uh, any other better way to tell this story, just because this setup here uh, is just so awesome. But you know what, I couldn't see any other better way to tell this story than uh, here at the uh, Auto Motorplex setup here at the Ridgedale Mall. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen, we actually got a bunch of these cars uh, into a mall here in Minnesota. Uh, just for the Christmas season, so uh, that video will be linked down in the description below as well. Uh, 
But with that said, guys, uh, I hope you really enjoyed, and I hope to uh, share more videos like this in the future.